Okay, so in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, IAC parked position tuning in the Holly Terminator X. Uh, again, focused on Fox bodies like always. Uh, and, and on this one, I'm actually going to do something interesting. I want to show you, you know, what the sort of out of the box tune looks like for the Holly, which is what's on my screen right now. I'm going to flip over to a stock computer from a Fox body and show you what they did. And then we're going to kind of look at a way to sort of mimic some of those settings, uh, get close. The logic's a little different, but um, but it, it's close. And and what the IAC parked position means, it, it's really used for, for two things. Number one, um, while you're cranking the engine, trying to get the engine to start, uh, this is the uh, duty cycle of your idle air valve, how much extra air is going to come through that while you're cranking. And then as soon as the car does fire, uh, it's going to start at whatever that position is and then slowly taper down to bring the idle down, uh, you know, in a predictable manner until it settles into your, your normal uh, target idle speed. Um, so that's kind of what this is. This is your cranking air and your sort of initial starting point before that decay occurs. And we're going to talk about the decay also. Now, the general uh, principle here is that this is based on what the coolant temperature of the engine is while you're, you're starting the car. Uh, and the colder the engine is, the more air it's going to need. The warmer the engine is, the less air it's going to need. Uh, and there's going to be some kind of a transition point. This thought is sound, and this is uh, very much in line with what Ford did. But the numbers are a lot different. So I want to stop here for a second. I'm going to jump over to uh, to a stock Fox body setup. So in here, uh, we have a chart for crank duty cycle. And uh, this is basically the same thing. You're seeing what's the coolant temperature while you're cranking across the bottom and what's the duty cycle. So you'll notice here it starts at 99% duty cycle, which is basically what the, uh, the Holly did. And when it gets to right here, it, it's going to be less as the temperature is hotter. So at this point, this is 160 degrees coolant temp, and it's a straight line tapered down to 180 degrees coolant temp where it will be a 60% duty cycle and it's it's straight line between the two. Now, uh, keep in mind also, this is the, the tune we're looking at here. This is a five speed uh, Mass Air Fox body. The automatic ones actually just stayed at 99% all the time. So if it's like an A9P for, a, for an auto trans Fox body, uh, it's just flat 99% duty cycle across the temperature range. Uh, but we're gonna simulate this for, for now. So. Going back over to the Holly software, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift all these numbers uh, up until 160. So really, we can just go in here and 100% all these guys. Okay, then when we get to here, this is where it drops down to 60, and it stays 60 through the remainder. Now, um, Truth be told, though, it's it's not good to work the idle air valve at true 100% duty cycle, so I'd really recommend you you let it go no higher than like 97 or 98. I know it's a minor difference, but uh, every little bit counts, right? So that's the next change we're going to do is go in here and change all those to, to 98. Now, the other thing you got to remember, too, is the, the old Fox body stuff is admittedly a little bit more um, crude and limited in its behavior. So here we have a lot of different temperature points we can set and do things with. You know, the Fox body only had really uh, the top position kind of had to stay at this ridiculous temperature. The bottom position has to stay at that. So really, we only have five usable points in here. So the question is, should we do something a little bit more granular? Yeah, probably. So what I, what I would probably do is bring this taper down just a little bit here. Um, there's really not that big of a difference between 160 and 180 uh, to warrant doing exactly what Ford did. So I would probably smooth this out a little bit. Uh, something maybe along these lines right here. Uh, and then also, uh, same thing here. You know, might make sense just to lift a couple percent in here and to kind of create a, a more smooth transition. But something more along these lines is closer to what Ford did as far as cranking is concerned. Now, once cranking is successful and the engine goes into run mode, uh, then we have to go back over here to your IAC settings and look at this uh, hold time and decay time down here under startup IAC position. So this is really saying that once the car does go to run, whatever that uh, duty cycle is that you just specified on the other screen, it's going to hold that exact duty cycle for this many seconds the whole time. And then once that's over, 
then it will transition down to whatever you'd normally need for idle and that it's going to transition across the decay time. So you're essentially saying stay at this percent for four seconds and then go down for another four seconds. Now, early on in your tuning with the system when you're, you know, your fuel's probably not quite right uh, and, you know, and a number of other things probably need some adjustment as well, the car's naturally going to be more cranky when you start it. So uh, if you find that when you first start the car, you know, uh, your, your RPMs come up real quick, but then they immediately come back down and they kind of choke and stumble and the car's really kind of struggling to maintain your reasonable RPM, then probably what you should do, at least initially, is try cranking the startup IAC position hold time way up to like, you know, nine or 10 seconds. That way it's at least trying to hold a, a high level of air for a while uh, before it tapers off. Now, if say you do that, so say you figure out kind of a sweet spot for the hold time and it, it stays real smooth, but then during the transition period, maybe it, it kind of comes down too fast and then again gets in sort of a swinging or choking idle, uh, then you might want to increase the decay time so that that transition takes longer. Uh, and it's it's a more, you know, gradual change going down. Um, so that just a couple thoughts for you, but something that you might really want to consider. Um, now, one more thing that I want to talk about is uh, at what point you can really start to dial these settings in. Well, number one, you got to get your fuel super, super tight. Um, so you can't do the fine tuning here until that's right. Uh, and number two, you need to get your, your idle air valve itself set uh, with the throttle stop screw on the throttle body. You need to set that in a way where once the car is fully warmed up and your, your fueling's you know, spot on, or at least closed loop is fixing it to make it good, um, you know, at warm idle, you need to try to get that idle air duty cycle down to maintain your RPM. So ideally you'd open the throttle stop screw until your, you know, until your idle air valve is somewhere around five to, to 15 or 20%. Factory forward, uh, warm idle, it actually sat up a lot higher. It was, uh, closer to, to 30 to 35% duty cycle at warm idle. Uh, but, but this system has a little bit faster, uh, computer logic and some other benefits to it, obviously. So, um, so you can probably get away with, with it being a little less and, and relying a little bit more heavily uh, on, on the remainder of its idle spark control to, to fine-tune things. Um, so just remember, you got to do that. you got to get that throttle stop screw set in a way where your duty cycle isn't excessively high. If your duty cycle at warm idle is really high, like 40 or 50 percent, then you need to turn your stop screw uh, clockwise to open the throttle blade more to let more air into the engine that way. Uh, and as you do that, you'll see that the duty cycle continues to drop. Um, and if it's basically a zero duty cycle at warm idle, then you know you've got too much air uh, coming into the engine through the throttle body. You need to turn that stop screw counterclockwise to reduce airflow through the throttle body. Uh, and then once you get that dialed in, you know you reset your uh, your TPS with the procedure you have in the Terminator, so it understands what closed throttle is. Restart the car, uh, you know, and then you can sort of revisit some of these settings. And you might find that once you get that right, uh, you might find your startup is a lot easier and smoother, anyways. So. Just something that you really ought to consider, but uh, but this is important for you guys to see this logic because so many of these cars that I help people with, um, they're struggling getting that sort of initial period after startup to be good, or they, they really have to crank and crank and crank and it's still not working uh, to get the car to catch easily. And another really key indicator that you probably need to increase the idle air in this parked table is if you find that you actually can't even get the car to start unless you you pedal the throttle a little bit, you know, maybe 20, 30% throttle and feather it and then it suddenly catches. You know, at that point, you're not changing fuel in any way. You're just letting more air into the engine and suddenly it catches. So that usually indicates you either need more air to begin with or you're just running excessively rich during cranking. Uh, and this is kind of the only way to balance out the air to fuel ratio until the car runs. So uh, just some ideas there. But, but this is another key thing. If you want to do it similar to how Ford did, Give something like this a try and, and really get in this mid-range. This is the temperatures you're most concerned with, probably that 40 to 160 degree range. That's where there's some pretty significant differences between what Ford did uh, and then what Holly did in sort of their can tune. So hope it helps, guys. Good luck. Godspeed.